we're going to re reference different occasions. But in the book of Genesis chapter 39, we'll read the story about Joseph. If you recall, Joseph's brothers had sold him into bondage to be a slave. In those days, you could do that kind of thing. But his brothers, because they hated him, they were envious, jealous of him, they sold him. Well, he got down to a fellow by the name of Potiphar, who was an important person. He had Joseph working for him. And he made Joseph the supervisor of his house. He would take care of things here. He recognized that God was with Joseph. Potiphar did. But in Genesis 39, let's begin reading with verse 7. Uh, okay. Number one, Potiphar had gone uh, to take care of some business out of town. And verse 7 says, It came to pass after these things that Potiphar's Master, his master's wife, Potiphar, cast her eyes upon Joseph. She said to Joseph, lie with me. Let's go to bed together. But he refused. And he said unto his master's wife, he made a plea with her, Behold, my master wanteth not what's with me in this house. And he committed all that he hath in my hand. Your husband turned everything over to me. Verse 9 said, There's none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? I can't do what you asked me to do. It came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, every day she was hitting him up, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. It came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. and There was none of the other men of the house there within. So she caught Joseph by his garment and saying, Lie with me, go to bed with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. It came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, You see, my husband brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me. He tried to make me have a relationship with him. I cried with a loud voice. That wasn't really the way it happened, was it? I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and, and got him out. He ran off. She had a hold of his coat. In seminary, they told us young fellows, the preachers, he said, leave your coat. Run off. Get out of the way. And that's what he did. All right. Verse 17. She spake unto him according to the uh, words, saying, The Hebrew servant, Joseph, which thou hast brought unto us, came to pass, came in unto me to mock me. It came to pass that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. When Potiphar heard this, it came to pass when the master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did the servant to me, that his master was kindled. All right, forgive me, his wrath was kindled. Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in prison. Now, when I was in seminary, Brother J.W. Griffith, who was our teacher, he had taught for years and years. We studied this occasion. 
And he said Potiphar knew what kind of woman he's married to. Therefore, he put Joseph in a good place as far as prison goes, in the king's prison. He could have put him in a dungeon, but he put him in the king's prison because he suspected that maybe he heard the wrong version of it. Okay. Y'all, some of you have been watching the news and, and the several hours. <laughs> Karen told me she watched several hours of it. And she watched so long uh, the thing that she slept at 11 o'clock the next morning. The interviewing of Brett Kavanaugh to take the place of Anthony Kennedy on the Supreme Court. They've quizzed him up and down, and they put his family through an awful ordeal. They brought up some stuff that happened 36 years ago. And then I got to thinking about that, and just this week, Brother Enrique referenced this in Sunday school a little while ago. He didn't know that I was going to mention this as part of our uh, message today. But Bill Cosby, who they've been trying for some last several years, and they finally found him guilty, and they sentenced him to three to ten years, and he spent his first few nights in prison just this week. He admitted to some of those things. But there were women that came forth from everywhere that he didn't even know. Because they wanted some money. And we've, we've been, all been exposed to that with Bill Cosby. Uh, and then another that shook the world was Dr. Larry Nasser, who was in charge of training these young people for the Olympics and uh, did a superb job, didn't he? At least a lot of people won a, a lot of gold medals and so forth. But all the time, and it, there was at least 150 women, uh, girls and boys, ever, ever what it was, not sure now. Y'all strike that part where I said boys. I'm not certain that that's a fact. So let's go with the girls. Uh, we want to be correct if we're going to talk about the subject. But apparently he had been sexually molesting them during the time that they were in training for the Olympics. And that shook the world, knowing that these people who become popular to uh, our society had been treated in this manner. And then there was a fellow by the name of Harvey Weinstein, who was uh, entertaining these young wannabe actresses and taking advantage of them in order to get what he wanted. And we could go on and on. But the one I really want to uh, expound on, the Roman Catholic Church has been allowing this to happen for years and years. And they've found thousands of cases where these priests have been abusing these little boys and girls too, by the way. But abusing these boys under the precept of teaching them about the Lord or about God, they've been teaching them about a deviant sexual lifestyle. That's right. One that was against God's will and God forbids it. He hadn't changed his mind about it. But it starts those boys off on that course in life. 
Folk, that's not a good thing. The Pope, this week, they had to write up in the Chronicle about him, has said that the faithful were beginning to leave the church because of what has been happening. Could y'all blame them? Think about that a moment. These guys that are destroying young men's lives have been allowed to do that thing under the name of religion. And that raises my blood pressure. But I want to point out that our generation is in trouble. You know that. Our Lord warned us a long time ago. He said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And not only a man, but a nation. Whatever a nation sows, that shall we reap. Our sins have caught up with us. Been on the news this week of them, somebody coming into town and had the mayor and what have you all on this, but they was trying to create artificial girls so that these deviant people could have a relationship. You all know what I'm saying. I'm trying to say it. Uh, there's no good way of saying it. But it, it tells us what kind of generation we're living in. Our people are divided. That's what one of the uh, senators said. That our government is divided. And it is. But a man, Brett Kavanaugh, his past has been challenged. A woman came forth first. Two other women have come forth since. Without any substance. And people ask the question, is he or she telling the truth? Is Brett Kavanaugh? So they've called in the FBI to investigate again. I'm going to ask you all a question. How would you like the scrutiny that he's being exposed to? I'll tell you what, folk. If they come digging around in my closet, they're going to find some things 30, some odd, 40 years, 50 years ago, or maybe 20 years ago. Who knows? But the scripture says, There's not a just man that doeth good and sinneth not. But they're trying to drag up something this man did when he was in high school. Now, what's the purpose of the investigation? Stopped at Mighty Burger yesterday morning and one of their regular customers ran over to me and he said, he said, you know, some say it's about abortion, but it's not about abortion. Well, we know that Brett Kavanaugh has taken a conservative stand in the past. And they're afraid that, that when they get that vote, that's going to be five to four, and they will overrule Roe versus Wade again. The permission to kill babies is what it amounts to. There's no good way to put that, is it? That's what it amounts to. Murder little innocent babies who didn't ask to come here anyway, but we snuff them out before they sometimes get here completely. And then some say the investigation is about a power grab. 
One thing for certain. God has allowed this incident to permeate the news. Everybody's talking about it. I'm talking about millions of people have been watching. I have a friend from Canada, uh, the thing on the Facebook yesterday about what's happening to our country down here. Well, I hate to say it, it's just that bad in Canada too. Uh, But let's come on a little closer home. Look at our text. An accused man of God. One of my greatest heroes in the Bible is Joseph. Joseph was accused falsely by Miss Potiphar. Folk, God was watching the whole scene. God was using this event to bring Joseph down to Egypt and to carry out his plan. Although Potiphar's wife lied, God's plan was unfolding. But we don't know what part of God's plan is unfolding now. But I'm telling you, he's watching. But we asked a question here. We said, well, Brother Cobb, are you taking the man's side over the woman? Not necessarily. Look at the bottom scripture on the page there. We did look at that a moment ago. Just look back at it. Says God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. For as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Well, man does lie. And a lie is a lie, isn't it? Either something's the truth or it's not. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Folks, either our Lord was on a level with us or he's not who he said he was. But we come back to the question, could have Joseph lied? He sure could have. David was a man of God, wasn't he? Matter of fact, God said he was a man after mine own heart. Doesn't say that about any other individual in the Bible. And look at David's life. It began with lust, didn't it? He was on the rooftop and he looked over and he saw Potiphar, or Bathsheba taking a bath. Joseph, I mean, David looked over. He shouldn't have. They said, David said, Who, who's that pretty girl over there, that lady? They said, David, that's Uriah's wife. One of your best soldiers. One of your faithful soldiers. Go get her. Bring her out here to me. I want to, I want to see her. Now, I ask you all a question. When David summoned her there, he's the king. Everybody had to obey the king. So we don't know whether that she went willingly or what happened. But we know 
that she wound up pregnant with David's child. And that's when David began to cover up, didn't he? He began to lie about everything. Tried to make Uriah think it was his child by bringing him in on a leave from the battlefield. So my friend, a child of God can do those things. But there's a price to pay. Matter of fact, David had Uriah killed so he could take his wife. But that's when the chickens become, started coming home, didn't they? Right. So David lied plus murder, deception. And folks, the price that David paid was heavy. Y'all know what happened. David's own son, Absalom, tried to have his own daddy killed so he could be the king over God's chosen people. And then David's little boy that was born to Bathsheba God said, yeah, that little boy is going to die, David, because of your sin. And David said, no, Lord, let me die instead of my child. It didn't happen that way. And if you just look after that occurrence, of all those things David did and all that David had to pay, folk, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Because there's always a time of reaping. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He that soweth unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And folks, that's a, a price you and I don't want to pay. But I'm going to close our thoughts this morning by saying to you today, we need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for this current hearing. We need to pray that we as a nation repent and pray that in all this that the name of our Lord be magnified and pray that we might see the hand of God. And folks, that's what initially, that's what really happened in, in Joseph's story. A nation witnessed the saving of a generation because the people are going to starve to death. And God gave Joseph the prophecy that there was going to be a great drought over through the land. And he had Joseph to prepare for it. And he saved all the people of that day. So I ask you today, you pray that God's power will be seen in all this. Okay. We'll have Brother Enrique go come and Linda's going to come. We're going to have an invitation song. If you're here this morning, if you've never taken Jesus as your Savior, well, I'd suggest it's time to do that this morning. As we stand together.